Okay, as promised, I'm going to do a review video on the Phantom Mount Gimbal that I got at rcdrones.com there. I'll put the link down below. Uh, one thing, I mean, I just now got the package and I wasn't too happy with the postal service we have here. They dropped it off outside, didn't even knock on the door, and uh, so it's been sitting out there in the rain. Um, but I was able to get it in time before it became completely soaked. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get it open and uh, we'll show you how it was packaged. Okay, got the box open and I am happy to say that it comes pre-assembled. I like that. Uh, it does feel a little heavier than I was hoping for, but uh, we'll get some, uh, try to get some weight measurements for you. And uh, uh, let's see, um, but again, nice, nicely packed. Uh, looks to be in great quality there so and there is the BEC the external BEC that I ordered with it as well by using the external BEC you'll be able to apply more voltage to the servos get a faster response plus it reduce reduces the current draw on the NASA there uh, but uh, in my video I will do the installation and uh, provide any tips that I may come across and that's it for the packaging. And I'm going to have to go get a towel to wipe off the water from the table. Okay, uh, as promised, I was going to get a, uh, a weight measurement. Uh, unfortunately, the little scale I've got only goes up to 70 grams. So it's uh, overloading the scale. So what we do know that it is over 70 grams. Um... Uh, and I think, well, I'm not going to say because I can't exactly remember what the weight is on that. So once I look it up, um, Tony over there at RC, uh, RC Drones told me what the weight was. I'll look it up and I'll post it down in the description down below as to what he quoted me. Uh, and this here is just a, this other servo or the gimbal I was trying was a cheap one that I found online there. Uh, so this one is also over 70 grams and I think that one was about 98 grams when I measured it at a friend's house. Uh, but I like the way this one's got that battery strap on the back. Uh, that way you can put a larger battery. And uh, Tony has told me that uh, he hasn't had any problems with uh, excessive weight. Uh, so again, looking forward to doing the install. So uh, keep watching and uh, check out the installation on it. And just as an added bonus, I thought I would throw in a, a little short here on the case that I got for the DJI Phantom. Found it on Amazon.com there. Uh, I will also post the link to it down in the description. This one here, I think it was about $40. So it's not bad case really for uh, $40. Some of the ones I've seen, you know, are up in the hundreds. Uh, it does come with the foam, uh, little pull-out pieces of the foam. Uh, what I did up top here is I just t uh, ripped this out and put a little bit of uh, sticky tape on the back side there. Uh, that way it just clears the props and doesn't put any undue stress on the on the props there. Uh, I am going to modify the, the foam to accommodate the, the gimbal. And uh, it comes with three pieces of foam. I just used two. I uh, got the other one set aside for if I want to modify it at a later time. But again, great case for uh, 40 bucks, I think it was, on Amazon. Uh, and I will also uh, be taking this with me on the plane. And so I got a little TSA lock that fits in there, fits in there fine. Uh, so that, I mean, I was hoping to take it as carry-on, but the, the case is a little bit big for uh, the plane, so... Anyway, again, just add a bonus there. Now back to the build. For those of you that haven't seen my other modified uh, or modification video where I installed the AR8000 receiver for Spectrum, uh, just a kind of a review for those who did. But uh, in order to take the cover off, uh, you're going to use a two uh, two millimeter. Um, Allen, Allen head there to take off. There's one, two, three Allen head screws on each each arm. 
and then uh, there is one little one little uh, screw here on the very tip of each arm uh, so that's what you take off to take the top of the, the phantom apart and when you do just be careful that you don't pull the wires to the GPS unit there so be careful taking the top off also of as as you can see there we'll have to remove those those uh, blades and uh, you uh, should already know how to do that from uh, doing your installation after getting the phantom okay what I'm gonna do here this is the ex uh, the external BEC uh, one thing though I would like to point out there is uh, wires that come with it are just a little long uh, and uh, it would be nice if maybe those were a little bit shorter uh, but I'm sure that this is used for many different uh, applications with regards to uh, uh, gimbals and so forth on different various um, quadcopters so again this is probably a just a generic uh, external BEC but uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I've got my external power leads that comes already installed on the, the Phantom. I had that soldered into the voltage telemetry that I have set up here. Uh, that way I can monitor the, the battery voltage while in flight. And that has saved my butt a couple of times, so I'd like to keep that. Uh, if you would like to see how I installed the the AR8000 uh, spectrum receiver and telemetry uh, please check uh, uh, look for the video on my channel there uh, you'll see a um, playlist of my quadcopter videos and uh, it'll be easy to find for you there um, but anyhow what I'm going to do is uh, solder uh, the power leads from the BEC to the red and black uh, leads and uh, uh, here for the power uh, and we'll just solder all three of those leads together. I mean, I'm sorry. All, oh, yeah, all, all, all separate of the connections together as one, and we'll uh, cover them up uh, with some uh, heat shrink. Uh, then after I've done that, uh, I'll install uh, the two white wires. These are the ones that's going to be going into the NASA. Uh, all those are is just the signal that will uh, signal wire that's going to the, the servos. And then at the other end, we've got uh, uh, the connectors for the servos. And uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this yet. I'm kind of going to do it as I go. And then, of course, you'll see the, the results in the next uh, scene there. But uh, I've already got servo extensions coming out for the previous gimbal that I had. That way I can remove it real easy if I wanted to. Uh, so, again, we're going to do that. Uh, but what I'll probably do is just connect these to the other servo ends. I'm going to end up getting a bunch of wire up here, but we'll see what I can come up with. Uh, maybe I can shorten something somewhere along the way. Uh, I would have liked to have used these, uh, but you would, in order to get them to go through the hole, you have to take the pin out uh, or the connector off. And unfortunately, the way these connectors are set up, so you can see that there. Uh, there's no way of manually taking that um, that end off, uh, unlike these other ones here, where you can just take and pull back the clip and pull the the wires out. Um, so the other th the other option that you have is you can, if you know how to do it, uh, take and cut these shorter and install um, some uh, other servo connectors, uh, which I might do. Anyway, because I've got some extras, but uh, it's rather a pain in the butt. So anyway, again, uh, next scene, I should have this all completed uh, for the BEC installation. Okay, I got the BEC uh, soldered in there. Just a couple things I wanted to point out. Uh, make sure that you get, them, uh, get the polarities correct. You want uh, uh, red on the BEC to, uh, of course, be uh, red on the power lead there. And then the black is going to go to the gray on the power lead, uh, and then of, and of course red and black on my sensor there. But if you're not hooking up the telemetry, I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, another thing too, as I was soldering this up, I noticed that uh, the wires for the power lead there on the the Phantom are a little smaller than what we've got for 
the BEC. Uh, and they are a little smaller than the wires that uh, come with um, the servos there. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue with regards to current going through that wire. Uh, but it's something to keep an eye on. If you uh, don't feel comfortable soldering it to these smaller leads, uh, you can always solder it, uh, make a modification and solder it to your, uh, your main batteries there. Uh, but I'm going to go with this for the time being. Uh, I may uh, open up the Phantom uh, from time to time just to take a quick peek at those wires to see if they're showing any signs of getting, getting hot. Uh, again, it all depends on how much current that these little wires can handle with regards to how much current that um, these servos are going to be drawing. So um, if you see this video and uh, uh, have any comments um, with regards to that, please uh, post them, uh, let me know. And um, again, we'll let you know how things go when we're finished. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to point out too and then I think about it is uh, I'm probably just going to tie wrap this down in place in here somehow. It looks like I'll have enough room there. Uh, of course, if you don't have the telemetry module, you can just easily uh, attach that BEC right there in that spot. Uh, I don't think I'll have enough clearance on the top there to do it. Um, but um, you'll see also as the video goes on how I ultimately ended up doing it. And I think I have decided that I'm going to uh, cut these wires short and put my own ends on them. Because uh, it's just really going to get cluttered here wire-wise. Um, so, all right, moving on. Just in case you're wondering how to take these ends off, if you do decide that you want to do it, uh, it's pretty simple, really. Uh, I'll set that there. Uh, hopefully, I'll get it to focus. Uh, what you want to do is use something that's got a nice point to it. Uh, I would recommend not using an exacto knife. Unfortunately, it's the only thing that I've got that's uh, it's got a nice point to it. Uh, again, I recommend that you do not use a Zacto knife. I don't want to hear that somebody cut themselves because they saw that I was using a Zacto knife. Uh, but what you do is you just get up underneath. There's a little clip here. Uh, again, I don't know if I can get that to focus correctly on there. Uh, but if you look close at your pin, there's a little clip that you can pry up. And what that's doing is it's holding that, that connector in there. So you just pry that up a little bit, and then you just pull that wire out the same time as you're prying up on it. Uh, now see, this is, as you can see in the video, this is why it's a bad idea to use a Zacto knife. If that slips, that's going right into my finger. Uh, so, again, do not do this at home. Alright, thanks, and uh, continue watching. One more thing I should mention too with regards to removing the pins. Uh, once you remove a pin, they slide in and out of that little hole down there real easy. You just pull the wires in and out. Uh, but putting them back together. Uh, I found that, uh, let me turn that around. If you lay the pin like so, to where you have the holes at the top, the opening pointing to the right, or the male end pointing to the right, I have found that uh, your negative will be on the bottom pin, the positive or the red wire will be in the middle, and your signal wire will be up at the top. So if you lay your plugs like so and put them in uh, back together that way, uh, you should everything should fit fine. Uh, there's uh, also, again, uh, you can see that little tab uh, that Sorry that I don't have another person to help me videotape this, but uh, so we're kind of doing this by uh, by hand here. Uh, you want to put that how it dips in at the top. Put that towards the top so that pin that's in here will um, lock it into place there. Hopefully that helps. On to the next step. Uh, also I'd like to point out that uh, while you have everything open it may not be a bad idea See how this wire, this, this um, brown wire, is wrapped around, over, underneath this USB port or USB cable here? 
I did see a report on RC groups there that uh, over time that USB cable there puts a lot of tension on this uh, uh, the brown wire and I believe that's for the LED light uh, he had noticed that his light stopped working um, so while you have everything open you may want to take and pull that USB out of there and just move that wire over to the other side of it and that will relieve a lot of the stress there off of that uh, that brown cable and then of course just put that USB back in there um, so again another good tip hope that helps and prevents somebody from having an issue with their LEDs okay we've got uh, BEC fully installed a few things I want to point out is uh, this is how I've got it located in my Phantom again if you didn't have if you don't use the TM uh, 1000 module or if you're not even using spectrum receiver or whatever this will uh, fit just fine right in there with no problems uh, so what I did is I did cut the, the servo leads shorter uh, to kind of give me a little extra space up in here before there was a lot of wiring a few things uh, here your signal lead has to go on the bottom of your pin there and then the nozzle and we are using F1 and F2. F2 is your uh, roll servo. I'm sorry, F1 is your roll servo. Servo. So make sure on the servo that you're going to be using for the roll, F1. F2 is going to be for your pitch servo. So, uh, and then the way I have it run here is I've got my pitch servo coming out on the right. And... Uh, yeah, so when that mounts up in there, uh, my pitch servo will be on the right, roll servo will be on the left. So that'll help me uh, remember which one is which. Uh, and then again, the reason why I did this was for uh, ease of uh, being able to take it off. Uh, put it off and on if I want to take it off and go back to using regular GoPro mount, I can still do that as well. Uh, that way I don't have to take everything apart to do it. Um, but if you like, you know, feel free, you can, you know, take that plug off and run that right up inside that uh, hole there in the leg and uh, connect it uh, directly into the nozzle or the BEC if you wish. Uh, that's perfect, or I mean, that is purely preference. Alrighty, uh, now I'm going to put this together up at the top, maybe put in a few screws just to hold everything in place while I flip it over. And uh, we'll get that uh, gimbal mounted. One thing I forgot to mention is uh, everything seems to fit okay once I put the cover on. Uh, there's just, requires just a little bit of pressure there, so that's good. There's no, uh, obviously it's there, I mean there's no uh, real binding up inside there. Uh, so, and uh, that should work fine. I just realized uh, the servo doesn't come with any sort of instructions. There was no instructions for it, uh, written instructions anyhow. I do know that they've got some uh, um, tutorial videos on YouTube. And once I find those, I will link those to the um, to the description as well. If you prefer to look at the tutorial videos. But um, it's pretty straightforward from what I can look see here. Um, you take those two screws. Take these two screws off for your uh, regular uh, GoPro mount. Uh, you may want to save that. Uh, you, who knows, you might want to go back to using the GoPro mount. So I would put that in a safe place. And then what we're going to do here, probably to make things easy. Uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? Oh, you should be able to just rotate that servo and uh, get up in there uh, with a uh, screwdriver, like so, so we can get access to those. Uh, what we're going to do is line up. Looks like we've got two holes there. 
Yep, the two holes will line up, the forward and the back hole there will line up. They do uh, give you a couple of screws with some washers and we'll just put those in there and right through those rubber grommet mounts and uh, tighten it up. Oh, another thing too. Uh, I was planning on using uh, the back here for a battery. Uh, that's that's I've seen that option there. You put a larger battery in. It comes with a real nice strap that you can use to strap the batteries down. But uh, the 2200, uh, uh, I got some turnagey. Let me grab those batteries real quick. Uh, okay, found the batteries. Uh, another little nice little tip here. Uh, Hobby King. Uh, and it has some nanotech 2.25 uh, batteries 3s batteries and they do it they did have some in the US warehouse which I fortunately I live nearby about a 30 minute drive so I picked up three of these yesterday uh, because they did not have any of the 2200 milliamp hour batteries in stock but I got these 2.25 milliamp batteries and they fit perfect into the, the uh, phantom housing there so if you're looking for uh, something that's a little bit bigger it's not much I mean it's only 0 0.05 milliamps but uh, if you're unable to find any of the 2200s these nanotech uh, turnagey nanotechs fit fine uh, another suggestion uh, you may want to use some Loctite on these screws prior to installing them there and just put a little dab of blue Loctite you don't want to use red red is just way too difficult to get apart again uh, blue works great okay we're almost finished here yet uh, I'm still gotta put I still have to put the top of stuff on but uh, I'm just gonna show you how that camera is gonna fit in there uh, I have some really nice velcro that uh, wraps over and sticks to itself. What I think I will try for securing this is uh, take a piece of that Velcro, glue it on the bottom side of the uh, the the carbon fiber tray there, and have it come up around the back side, and then that way I can just pull it tight and, and uh, secure it at the bottom. Uh, so we'll try that. See how that goes. See how that works. Uh, I've thought about using rubber bands. O-rings. One thing that worries me about rubber bands and O-rings, though, is if it, you know if they, those things get dry, and you're up there flying around and you didn't notice it, and all of a sudden, doing it goes. There goes your camera. So uh, I think I feel a little bit better with um, some Velcro. Uh, and this stuff here is uh, pretty easy to come by. Uh, hardware stores, as you probably all know, being in the hobby, uh, and you know where to find all that good stuff. Uh, a few things to point out here. Let me get the camera out of the way just in case I don't want, to want that to fall. Uh, I'll show you how I ran the, the cables up nice and tight on the side. You want to make sure that uh, you're going to get all kinds of clearance there and uh, uh, no, no binding up on your cables when you have enough. Uh, the cables for the servos are a little long. I thought about uh, cutting those short and putting lug the terminals or the connectors on the end, but uh, let the record show that I really hate doing those terminals or those uh, connectors. It's a pain in the butt. So for the time being, uh, I'm going to uh, just tie wrap these up and I tie wrap that one to the tray that uh, our connector laid real nice across top of that there. And uh, so uh, that's nice and out of the way. The only one you have to worry about binding up really and making sure that you have long enough is the roll or the pitch servo. Uh, uh, and then you may have noticed on the back, uh, I ended up putting my satellite receiver uh, on the bottom side there with some sticky tape. Uh, the carbon fiber shouldn't bother it too much uh, because it's on the underside. And so, of course, when you're up in the air, uh, it should have pretty good uh, uh, signal on that there. Uh, it would be a different matter though if it would be on the other side of the carbon fiber. Uh, carbon fiber has a tendency of um, interfering with uh, RF or the RC signals on the transmitters. So uh, there we go. Uh, let me get that uh, strap put on there and uh, we'll continue. Another little tip that I just thought of whenever you're gluing to uh, carbon fiber you want to take some sandpaper 
and uh, or, or any any way of scuffing up the area. You want that smooth surface gone. You want to scuff that area up, make some ridges in it, so that way the glue's got some place to adhere to. Uh, so just a little tip there be, before we move on. Okay, now it's time for the Phantom Assistant set a setup. Uh, and I've got this information directly from the tutorial that uh, RC uh, Drones has up on their website. And again, I'll have a link to that down uh, below in the description. Uh, now there is one thing I want to point out though. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here. But uh, output frequency is 400 hertz. Uh, the pitch was 1000 maximum. Uh, center was zero. Now center you can adjust to, in order to get the gimbal centered. So uh, you can adjust that to negative to make it go one way, positive to make it go another way. Uh, with regards to the pitch, I'm not going to worry about the center position because the way I have it set up on my uh, DX8 transmitter is I can adjust the pitch by rolling the knob. Uh, I've got that set up. Now if you're using a stock transmitter you won't be able to set that up so uh, you may have to adjust your center there in order to get your uh, pitch to where you want it uh, I mean you can have your pitch going down a little bit uh, if you prefer you, you know uh, your camera to show the ground a little bit more uh, so you can adjust that with your uh, the center on that pitch channel f2 now uh, one thing I did find rather interesting uh, they recommended that you, uh, for a good starting point on your roll max and minimum, just that they found that 750 maximum and minus 750 minimum was a good point or a good spot. But uh, when I set that at 700, let's see, we'll go ahead and adjust that now. We'll go back to 700. And remember to hit enter after making an entry or it won't save it to the NASA. And we'll go with 750. Or minus 750 enter uh, now I did notice let's see if we can get that there it would be nice if that cover was up I did notice that if you set it at the 750 maybe we can get it up underneath here and as you tilt it the camera binds up at the top and it's binding that servo so you can hear the servo I don't know if you can hear it on the I don't know if you can hear it on the, the, the video there, but it's binding that servo. Uh, and so if you don't notice that, that it's binding on the ground and you're up there flying around, you might be binding that servo quite a bit. But so I found, if I put it at my or positive 400, uh, no, let's go positive 450, I think it was. And then we go negative 450. Uh, let's see it still still binds I think we're gonna drop that down a little bit farther because if you're tilted in such a way too it's gonna bind and uh, so pay close attention to your roll and uh, maximum and minimum because uh, you don't want to bind up them servos that could cause you some problems there so let's try 350 and uh, I'm using both uh, 350 for max and minimum. Uh, granted, you can find out which side you have more clearance on, and just adjust the size that you the side that you want. And it looks like 350 is going to work fine. I don't know if you can see that there, but it, uh, it's no longer binding up even at the high pitch. It's not allowing it to go all the way up. So uh, pay close attention to your minimum and maximum ranges there on your uh, uh, settings because uh, you don't want that uh, servos to be binding up. Uh, then moving on, uh, the gain, they recommended uh, 27 for pitch, uh, normal direction. And in their uh, tutorial video, they mentioned 30 for pitch for the roll reversed. Uh, for some reason, 
mine works in normal. If I go reverse, then the camera works in the wrong direction. So uh, you may uh, want to experiment with that too. Let's see, I switched it over to reverse, and you can see that the camera is going the wrong direction that I want. It's actually going in the same direction that the nose is going, which is what we're trying to avoid. Uh, so I switched that back to normal. Uh, and then the manual control speed, you don't have to worry about that if you're using a stock receiver or transmitter. Uh, that's for that's how fast that uh, your pitch will adjust if you use uh, a knob like I do here on the DX uh, uh, the DX8 for uh, adjusting the, the angle there. Uh, another thing I liked uh, that that Velcro idea I like it. I just uh, what I'll do on the Hero 3 is when I go to Put the camera on I'll turn it on and turn on the Wi-Fi uh, so that way I can activate the phone with the remote uh, or activate the the camera via remote that way uh, I don't have to uh, worry about trying to get to the buttons well you probably even just push in there to get the buttons but uh, yeah I think that's gonna work fine uh, and I just used epoxy I found that epoxy works best uh, from what I saw on RC groups, uh, a lot of people say epoxy works best when you're trying to glue something to carbon fiber. Uh, so I just, yeah, just some little bit of two-part epoxy to glue in one piece, one end of that uh, Velcro strip so I can strap it on around to the other side. And uh, uh, I think the gains are good at 27 and 30. Uh, it seems to have a pretty good reaction time there. One thing I do uh, like is the fact that these servos are very nice and smooth uh, compared to that other gimbal that I was using uh, where it was very bouncy. Um, I really can't wait for the weather to get nice. So hopefully I can do some test flights before we go to Vegas next week. And um, so... Um, I'm going to wrap things up here and we'll do a uh, one final uh, video uh, to uh, show what I, what I think overall with uh, the packaging installation and so forth. Okay, uh, just some final thoughts on uh, the installation and uh, from what I've discovered and so forth. Um, Unfortunately, I just looked outside and it's still pouring down rain, uh, so I ain't going to be able to get any flight flying testing done anytime soon. But uh, overall, uh, I like it. Uh, I do like the smooth movement of the servos. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's just going to it's going to do quite well. Uh, again, I think it's a little. You know, it's a little on the heavy side, uh, so I'm probably right at the maximum uh, required uh, or maximum uh, weight that uh, DJI suggests of one kilogram. Once I get over, get a chance to get over to my friend's place who's got a larger scale, uh, we'll uh, try to get you a, a full flying weight uh, of it. But uh, as you can see, it's got a nice, nice smooth turn. And uh, it, it promises to get some nice smooth, uh, some, some nice smooth videos. Um, it's, it sounds like I hear something cracking or popping, but what it is is just my uh, 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 Velcro back there hitting. It's, it's no, no sparking or anything like that there. Um, so again, we're good. I do like the way that uh, my uh, idea came out for the... Uh, Velcro strap there. I might also put uh, maybe some uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, gyro tape uh, in, uh, down here at the bottom. Uh, it uh, should apply for or give a good cushion. Uh, I'll just won't uh, it won't remove the the paper from the top part of it. Uh, I'll just uh, it, it's kind of like a double sided foam type of uh, uh, tape. Uh, and I'm not sure if I have any lying around or not, but uh, so that as a suggestion there, and that might help keep this from there. It does slide around because it is a little smooth on that um, on the carbon fiber there. So you might want to also put something that uh, won't be so smooth there. 
but by putting that uh, gyro tape on there, uh, it might help with a little bit of the, the jarry uh, vibration of the, the quadcopter. But uh, all in all, I like it. And uh, they also have another version. And again, double check too that you're not binding up any of the servos. And uh, looks like we're clear. All right. Um, and if I come across any other information that uh, might be helpful, I'll post that down in the descriptions. Or there might be some additions to the end of this video. Uh, so uh, uh, watch it till the end, just in case. That way, uh, if I do add to this video, it uh, be easier for me to edit it and just add it to the end. So, uh, all right, thank you, and uh, safe flying, everybody. And don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. Uh, so oftentimes I see that, you know, I get a video out there that's got thousands and thousands and thousands of hits, and they only have two likes. It's important that you like it. It helps promote the video. So, uh, again, if you like this video and it's helped you out, remember to hit the like button. Thank you much.